Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. She's back, very smart woman, Kira Davis, host of Just Listen to Yourself podcast and editor at large for Red State. You know, my dear sister, I used to be editor at large for Rolling Out. And so I, I enjoyed the flexibility and freedom that comes with that position. I'm now president of Rolling Out. I don't have as much flexibility and freedom as being editor at large. It's a fun <laughs> position to have. The boss so never does. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So congrats to you on that. Thank um, you. Happy New Year to you. We're going to chop it up about school choice and how critical race theory has eliminated some of that choice for black founded charter schools. And let's get into the Voting Rights Act, two versions of them presented by Democrats primarily and supported by Democrats almost completely. So let's start with the Voting Rights Act or the versions of that bill. What are your thoughts about it? And do you agree with the sentiment of it or you or do you disagree? Uh, I I think the sentiment of it is is people are concerned about the sanctity and the uh, and the and the uh, legitimacy of their elections. And I think that that reflects where we are as as a nation when it comes to elections. But as far as what's in the bill, my concern is that it's not going to withstand any any constitutional challenges, either version. And I think this is why it's having so much trouble. So what the bill really does is it federalizes elections that are constitutionally held at the state level. And that's not really been a part of the discussion. Well, except on this show, um, when we're we're talking about what's in this bill, and so I can understand that people are getting really emotional over it. But if you dig in and read it, it's like it has a lot of problems. So there are reasons why there are even some Democrats opposing it, and I fear that it it, it just wouldn't withstand a constitutional challenge. Now, let me ask you this question, uh, Madam: Why do you think what part of the bill or what dynamic? do you believe is unconstitutional? The dynamic that takes the the state, the uh, the election mechanics out of the state and places them at the federal level. So, uh, you know, like federal counting, federal oversight, those types of things. As you well know, our constitution is built to uphold states rights. And our constitution is, is actually structures elections around states doing these things themselves. Because states are basically little countries, right? We're the United States of America. And so that is really the big, my biggest problem with it. And I think that is the thing that's going to be challenged if it does pass, which it's not looking like that's gonna happen. All right, so that's fascinating. Do you mind if I read the constitution to you? Yeah, uh, no, no. Article one, section four, it says the times, place and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives talking about federal elections, what you are discussing on the show, shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But this is in the constitution, the Congress shall make at any time by law, make or alter such a regulation or regulations, plural. That's in your US Constitution. So yes, when you, that's a constitutional amendment, you're right. So when you what say- the, That's what that language is. Correct. So when you say, well, it's unconstitutional because the power only rests with states to determine these elections. The Constitution disagrees with you. The Constitution says it does rest with the state unless the United States Congress decides to pass a law where it does not. That's what it says, yeah. Article 1, I know, but four. there are other, yeah, that's right. But there are other provisions in the Constitution Name that them. provide for states rights over Name the them. federal government. Name I them. can't right now because I don't have the Constitution in front of me. However, I'm my thing is not don't pass this. I'm not saying that. Rashad, what I'm saying is I fear it will not withstand a But constitution. you gave your premise, in all due respect, madam, yeah. you gave the premise, you said, listen, I don't- I'm not saying don't, don't pass it. I think the Democrats should try to pass it. Okay, well, they have. But yeah. the issue is when you say, you know, uh, Rashad, I don't think it's going to pass the constitutional muster because it's adversarial to the constitution in the in the aspect that it takes away 
the state's ability to run a federal election. Well, I just showed you where it's actually pro-constitutional, is in the Constitution and allowable specifically in the context of the Constitution for the United States Congress to pass laws that will then federalize an election. It says they can do it at any time they choose by law or alter such regulations. That's in the Constitution. So if you're saying the biggest barrier for this Voting Rights Act to become a reality is the fact that it's somehow unconstitutional. I just disproved your theory or your narrative that it is unconstitutional. I don't think that's the biggest barrier. What's the other barrier? The biggest barrier, Democrats. Okay, you you think also the barrier are Republicans as well? Well, Republicans are going. Republicans are the opposition party, so Republicans Mm -hmm. are going to oppose. But this is about people. This this is about people, right? Let's not get so caught up in the partisan conversation that we forget what's in the bill. So you said, all right, here's a problem with the bill. I have disproved that as a problem. Do you like what's in the bill? Do you know what's? Tell me what parts of the bill you do not like. I think the feds should have their hands out of state business. I mean, this applies in my. But are these not federal libertarian philosophy? This applies across the board. Okay. You know, are my these, principles are, these are, are these federal elections, they're general elections, but general elections are held by and oversee overseen by states. So not the Fed. Okay. And so here's my thing. Here's my thing. Yeah. Anything we do for one side is gonna have to be done for the other side. So let's just pretend that Donald Trump is going to be run again in 2024 and wins in 2024. Do we want Donald Trump to be in control of counting the votes? All right, let me ask you a question. Number one, if Donald Trump is in charge of counting the votes, that is unconstitutional. I cannot start making policies based on some man that may break the law in his future position or future power. I can make good but and Joe sound Biden policy. But Joe Biden said himself that Madam, it's about who counts the votes. Madam, if Donald Trump counts the votes, that is against the law. That is unconstitutional. I can I cannot well, make a policy. That's a metaphor. I cannot it, make a I mean, policy dynamic. We don't based. have to do this. We both okay. understand that Donald Trump or Joe Biden is not going to be sitting in a room, you know, counting out the votes. Well, that's but what Trump basically wanted. Does have the mechanics. Okay, well, do you want him to have that control again? This is a this is Madam. a state issue. It should stay at the states. This is good for us. It's okay. better for us. This night. All right. Um, Thirty-two states passed voter restriction laws after they believed in what's called the big lie that somehow the election was stolen from Donald Trump. These states do not cite any voter fraud whatsoever in their narrative, nor in their audits or investigations. But over thirty states, Republican states. Pass these, excuse me, 30 Republican led legislatures pass these laws out of their chamber. My question to you is Do you believe the election was stolen from Donald Trump? No, I believe, and also I would object to your description of the laws. They are not election restriction laws, they are election integrity laws. And in fact, on my podcast, which you mentioned at the top of the show, I went through both Georgia voting law and Texas voting law line by line, okay. so that listeners how many pages could is the Georgia voting law? The Georgia voting law, I think it might be maybe I read three or four pages. I don't know. You can go look on my podcast. I mean, I okay. went through line by so line. I understand it's, it's that. It's not well, that much, but, madam, but madam, the point, my madam, point is. Madam. Madam, that they're not let me correct you on laws, something. They're integrity laws. Okay, that's that's the point you're trying to make. Number one, that bill is over 90 pages long. That's number one. I've actually read the entire bill. Do you even I, know well, the name I, of the bill? I <laughs> listen. The you bill told me you read three lines or oh, three pages. I did not read three lines or three pages. I you went said you read three pages. Bill. Then you know, Rashad, that every bill has three or four pages of meat and 90 pages of, of just legislative Ma'am, you said you read it line filler. by line, madam. So that bill is over 90 through, pages long. I did not read long. the legislative filler. Let me I tell you why. Let me tell you why I read the changes. Okay. Go to my ma'am. podcast. Just listen to yourself. I'm not going to your Davis. podcast. It's available right, you wherever right you find now. your podcast. Okay. And you can Adam. listen to me break down Georgia and Texas voting Break down voting the three pages. Line by line. Three pages, right? Just go to the podcast. I stand by my what I say. I, I I'm an honest broker. All right. So it's over 90 pages. Uh, what's the name of the Senate bill? Do you remember? 
The Senate bill for Georgia. No, yep. I don't remember offhand. I mean, I can Google okay. it right now if you want to take right. a minute. So the issue that passed the General Assembly and also the 90 plus page bill, Senate Bill 202. And in that Senate bill, it does restrict voting. I don't think you know where it restricts it. How does me, it restrict voting? I'm glad I you mean, posed please. that question. I'm, you. I'm glad you posed that question. And maybe you can invite me on your podcast and I'll debate you on it. Uh, this is where I would love that. Absolutely. This is where Thank restricted you. voting. In the state of Georgia, uh, the counties were allowed to basically choose when they uh, instituted early voting, also weekend voting. They could do this through their local board of elections because the Supreme Court got rid of preclearance. So you no longer had to receive uh, clearance from the Department of Justice to change some of these election dynamics. So what did counties like Fulton, DeKalb, Clayton and others do? These are primarily urban counties, okay? They decided to increase early voting and increase weekend voting, which contributed to something called souls to the polls. This is when churches, primarily black churches, Churches would take their church church goers to the voting precinct, to the voting booth, right? So what Georgia did is they decided to restrict those particular metro counties and cut down the days that they can do early voting and also weekend voting, limiting their access to the ballot on the weekend. They also changed the time of when you can do a drop off of your ballot. We call that the drop off ballot vote, right? At a yes, precinct all these certified points location. I discussed in my podcast. Right, yeah. so they decided to use right a 5 p.m. cutoff time, which made the rule ineffective because most people who used it, used it after they got off work, which was around 4 or 5 p.m. And they decided to limit the time that you can actually use the drop box system. In addition to that, the absentee voting dynamic, it was customary. To say, you know, I don't need to give a reason why I'm going to absentee vote. If I want to absentee vote, I can absentee vote. Now they're bringing back excuse only absentee voting. Another element that maybe when you read your three pages, you did not see. No, the I read all, Georgia, the, all these points you're talking about are in my podcast. Just listen okay. to yourself and Keira Davis. But you I can't promise. talk about it. I'm not now. lying to you. All right, so here's I the can't other talk point. about it. Let me respond to these points. All right, so I'm let me. Sorry I got that one I don't more have point. the page numbers I got and I one didn't print outs before I came on with you. I got I'm one. happy to discuss and debate this. Absolutely. I got one more point because I want to bring this home because I think you would understand the reason why this is important. They made it a criminal offense, okay? To give someone water or snacks in a line, it is a misdemeanor mm -hmm. punishable by six months in prison. No, it's not okay. illegal to give someone water and snacks Madam, in line. Madam, that's in the bill. That's in the it's law. It's not Even illegal Lindsey to Graham. give someone water and snacks in line. It is illegal Madam. for an, a political organization to give people water and snacks in line within 150 feet of a voting location. It is the same principle as wearing a a political piece of clothing like a MAGA hat or an Obama shirt during Obama elections, it's the same principle. It's the idea that you can't influence voters even at the last second by handing them a bottle of water emblazoned with the theme of a, of a or campaign slogan of a local politician. There's nothing to say that you can't bring food or water or someone can't bring you food or water All or right, someone can't I'm going to respond set up a stand and sell food or water. You cannot do it within 150 feet of the voting location. All right, you're incorrect. So let me go ahead and give you the truth because I hope people who are watching, when you see this, make sure you research the law. Even Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham went on national news and challenged the governor to strike that provision from the bill because he said it didn't make sense. So the bill, First of all, it's already illegal in the state of Georgia to do what's called electioneering. You cannot campaign, utilize your That's organization right. to campaign, nor can you use opportunities close to the precinct in order to campaign for your candidate. That's already against the law. There was no new law needed, it was already illegal. What they did is they said, we're gonna pass a new law because it's codified in the same Senate bill we're talking about, that makes it a misdemeanor offense. If somebody is not even electioneering, but they are providing food and beverage, that's the exact wording of the law, to individuals who are waiting in lines. Now, that's in the bill. So when you say, no, this is about electioneering, that's not in the law. The law doesn't say that. It is in the law. It's no, it's not in the law, man. that's I a damn lie. 
You you line your ass off on the lie. show. That, that's lying. a damn lie, ma'am. I don't like you're calling lying. people liars, but you are a damn lie. Me a it's liar. in okay. the bill. You need this to do is, some research and read it again. I am, but I'm I, going I, to I explain what the bill actually intended. You a damn lie. What There's the deal two, actually intended I, I broke to do. down over four episodes. I read every. I don't give a damn how many podcasts Texas you did. You law, are Georgia lying law. or completely misguided about the bill. I'm not lying, and Madam, I also I can you understand. You said the bill was that, three pages, and you the read every line. behind this makes you want to scream at me like this. Man, you're just lying. I don't like it when people. I don't like it when people take policy issues that are really bill. impacting people and lie about it. At least know what you're talking about. You're lying about it, okay? I don't like that. These are real people that are impacted by these policies and bills. We're talking about democracy. Y'all are making fun of this stuff. This is real, this is serious. It doesn't get realer than this. All right, did she leave? That's fine. Listen, I get passionate about this stuff and if I offend you, that's fine. Uh, But I'm going to say what I intended to say. The reason why that provision was put in the bill was to limit the encouragement of black voters who historically have longer lines at their precincts. They did not want nonprofits and churches to run ads and run campaigns and go knocking on doors saying we will provide you with water, we will provide you with food if you have to stand in lines. Because that was the campaign of the last election cycle. They wanted to make criminals out of pastors and nonprofit directors and college students who simply wanted to give water and food specifically to elderly people, they now want them to be criminals. That's a problem. 